Yes guys, we're back with another video here. Um, we're going to be getting into some more useful lessons. Literally from now on, every single video that I do put out, it will actually be valuable. It's not going to be any repeated sort of uh, lesson that we've taught in the past or anything, but definitely adapting it to some of the more recent things that I've been using, especially in my own trading as well. So with this one throughout the entire video, we're going to be getting into how to actually use a change of character correctly. Now remember, change of character is something that many SMC traders use. But this one little addition, trust me when I tell you, it will give a massive, massive confirmation for the rest of your journey as well. So before getting into all this, all of this, if you guys want to access me more and uh, access all my free Discord and everything like that, the link will be down below. And of course, you will have access to my free course and all that kind of good stuff in there. But yeah, anyways, apart from that, nothing else to plug in. Um, so talking about change of characters. Essentially, let's talk about the basics of it before anyone comes in and they don't really know much about it. Pretty much a change of character is when the trend or is when the trend is actually starting to change to the opposite side of the direction. So when we do look at something like this, this is typically what a usual trend will look like. We have got highs, we've got lows, a higher high and then a higher low uh, or a lower low and then a lower high as well. In this case, in a downtrend. And then typically when we're looking for a change of character, all it would be is we mark out a significant high in the past. So something like over there. Once price actually exceeds this area, plus gives us a confirmation above. So the candle actually has to close above. That's when we can assume that we are now changing the trend. And remember, whenever we're in the market, there are two types of cycles. There are consolidatory cycles, and then there are expansionary cycles as well. So typically, this is what we're going to get. It's all about accumulation, distribution in certain different types of areas. So this one is one uh, consolidation or accumulation, as we'd call it. And then this section over here would be the expansion, otherwise known as the distribution. So these are the two phases in the market that we do have. Now, remember, as I've said, when we do get confirmation to the other side of the market, that's where price will actually break our primary structural highs or our primary structural lows in the other uh, sort of trending conditions. And then that's when we can assume that we can now start to look for buys in this scenario. Taking this back to this real life scenario over here, we have got USD JPY. Now, the first thing we need to identify is this. How do we actually look for our significant primary highs and our significant primary lows? Typically, there's two ways that I would define this as. Now, remember, whenever we're defining a high or a low, usually what we're looking for is something like this. So we've got two candles up the middle one and then the third one would be lower down now the reason we say this is considered as a high is because the middle candle is always going to be the highest out of all of them now there are variations to this so for example you could have this one as the high and then this one could be something like this again still if we see further rejections downwards and then and then price actually gives us further movement to the downside that can be considered as a high. But remember, the whole point of it is that we have one peak that is never touched again. These are usually quite easy to see in the market. You know, when you're just zooming out on the higher time frames, for example, we can clearly identify the highs and the, and the lows over here. So as an example, let's just get the annotation tool over here. We've got, for example, one high over here, a low, one high, another low over here. We could, some people could say that this is, for example, a high and a low over here as well definitely viable this would be considered as a high this one i wouldn't consider as a low the reason i say that is because whenever we have a new low it must break the previous low so you see this one over here for example it doesn't break it at all so this would be considered the low and then um, this will basically be considered as a high but that would be the main one <laughs> okay cool so now we've actually identified how to look for these primary highs and lows when do we actually start to look for these change of characters? Essentially, there's two, te uh, there's two types of change of characters. The first one is this. Now, let's refer back to our change of character diagram over here. So we're going to have two scenarios. We're going to have the first one over here. And the second one is going to be the same thing. So we might as well just, just copy and paste it over. As you can see over here. So the first type of change of character would be a much weaker version. Now, again... Depending on which time frame, you are going to see different things. And I will explain this in a bit more detail. But essentially, what we're going to be looking for is a break above, a break above this significant area over here. Once that actually happens, typically what we are going to get is two types of formations. We're either going to get, and let's actually push it 
a bit closer to price over there. Copy and paste that over again. Typically what we're going to get is this. You're either going to get a candle closure below the primary high over here and simply all it does is it wicks above. At this point, price could either continue upwards, something like this, and then obviously you get your next candle closures above and then it's all okay. Or for example, price could actually reverse and start to move to the downside. This is what would be known as a liquidity sweep. Now, typically when this happens, um, again, like I said, we can expect that price will actually reverse to the downside. Now, the best type of change of character is when you see something like this. It actually closes above in terms of its body closure. Now, always, always, that is going to be the most important thing. Why is that? Because a body closure pretty much confirms which direction it's moving in. Towards the end of the video, I'm going to be getting into more detail of how we can actually use this when we're actually confirming our trades. But first of all, let's identify this. If we see this weak uh, change of character versus if we see the strong uh, change of character, we're obviously going to be going more for these types of things. Again, do not rule out these types of change of characters because there are many times where even I've entered on a trade and the change of character simply been a wick. The reason I say that is because, say for example, right now we're on the 15 minute time frame. On the five minute time frame, what it might actually look like is something like this. Where on a 15 minute, it might look like that. On a five minute, it actually engulfs above and then it starts to reject a bit further down to obviously give us that 15 minute closure just below. So remember, that's the difference. It always depends on what time frame you're looking at. So when it comes to beginners, they always get that type of thing where they have some slight confusion thinking, okay, which one should I actually enter with? All right, cool. So now that we've got that piece established, we can actually get into what happens once we see the change of character. So in this clear example, as you can see, we get that reversal very, very clear as day. You know, it exceeds the primary high over here, or you could say this primary high over here. It really doesn't matter. There's not too much difference in the scenario. We actually get engulfing bodies uh, closing above the area over here, as you can see. And at that point, that's when we can start to look for our entries. Now, typically, the change of character model is going to be something like this. So let's get into it in slightly more detail over here. So let's just delete this little bit over here. Okay, cool. So when that does happen, when that does happen, typically we're going to be looking for something like this. Price actually exceeds above and then starts to pull back. It's at the pullback that we actually start to mark out our different points of interest. Now remember, there are going to be different times where you might have some point of interest where you might have only one, where it's one order block right at the bottom. Now, it's not guaranteed that price is going to come back all the way. This is why some people enter on only fair value gaps, let's just say. For example, rather than entering right at the extreme level, you would enter at the fair value gap. Now, the way that I actually thought about this, and this was an, a problem that I kept running into time and time again, is using this idea that I've talked about in the previous video, and that's the whole idea of engulfing candles. So what do I mean by this? As you can see over here, USDJPY actually started to reverse. Once we got that entry, uh, once we got that confirmation of the body closure above, that's when we can assume we're only going to be looking for buys now. What actually ended up happening, price exceeded it one more time with that breaker structure to the upside. And at that point, that's when we can start to look for our points of interest. Now for me, if I am simply at this point over here, what points of interest do I have? I have, for example, some minor order blocks over here, but to be honest, most, most of them have been mitigated. So for me, the first point of interest is over here. The second point of interest would be over here. Yeah, let's just leave it grayed out since it never hit. And then the third point of interest would be this kind of area over here. Bear in mind, when I'm marking out my points of interest, I'm not over specific with them. This is something that I've learned over time and it's something that allows me to get into trades a lot more consistently in a way because I'm not always you know, just waiting on that one order block and then eventually it misses my trade completely. At this point, once these points of interest have actually been here, what you're going to do is not set a limit as, you know, what people would usually do. They would usually set their limit at the top of the wick over here of the order block. And then in terms of the stop loss, they will put it just below the low. That's okay. But the problem with that is we've got three points of interest. So how do we actually confirm them? Trust me when I say this, the best type of confirmation, and this is something that I teach even within the elite strategy, it's one of the components that we use, pretty much it is going to be this over here. You have a candle rejection just above, um, just above the point of interest. 
pretty much once you get that engulfing candle that is when you do a market execution your stop loss just the, just below the previous low now as a reminder your risk to reward is not going to be as high as if for example you're entering at every specific point of interest however the difference is your win rate is going to be increased and how can i actually prove that it's simply just by looking at some of the stats over here so i'm just going to bring it up real quick um you know our elite strategy has now hit an 80 percent win rate and this is pretty much from a series of um of tests that we've actually done over time 80 81 percent average win rate with euro usd and this has been tested every six months since 2020 each time hitting around an average 3.69 risk to reward an average 81 win win rate and again you can see the gains over here are incredible so this is simply just a little bit of insight of how to actually perfect the change of character strategy. Again, in terms of my personal strategy, it is, you know, um, built on a few models. And obviously, we do have a few more intricate things that we do look at. But again, if you are going to simply follow the change of character model, this is something that you want to be looking at. Wait for your change of... Let me actually write this down for you. Number one, and let's actually increase the size so it's a lot easier for you all to see. Number one mark out your primary highs and lows number two wait for a change of character with a body closure above so this is um let's just say for example we are looking for buys so i'm just going to delete this one number three we are going to then assume we are only looking for buys number four mark out your points of interests. Number five, when you get to the POIs, use the um, use the engulfing candle confirmation and market execute. So forget all the spelling. <laughs> I'm not here to to worry about all of that. But these are the simple five steps that you actually want to be looking at. So if you do want to take a screenshot, let me actually move it over here. Obviously, take a screenshot of that. And yeah, that is pretty much going to be the strategy step by step of how to perfect and have the most effective change of character strategy. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm trying to bring out as much value as possible. Please, like I've said, if you haven't joined yet, join the free Discord. Trust me when I tell you there is a lot going on in there, especially when it comes to the free PDFs I'm sending out, the free course, everything you need. You know, people are literally charging $500 for courses that, you know, you can simply get in this free entire thing. That's why I hope I made it for you guys. A whole seven modules over seven days that you can look at. And obviously you can um, use it to your advantage. So guys, take care. That'll be it for this one. And I'll see you all in the next one.